Like it or loathe it, plastic is a huge part of everyday life for people all across the globe. You probably use it to brush your teeth, to drink your coffee from, even to dress yourself. And as you've probably seen, it's having a particularly harmful effect on our marine wildlife. Seabirds are getting tangled up in fishing line, turtles stuck in the wrap from beer cans and other marine debris, and there are even garbage islands floating around the ocean. But that's the larger bits of plastic. What about the small bits, the microplastics that you probably have heard of? There's been a recent bit of research that's revealed that microplastics have been found in the guts of fish. So I want to know, how big is this problem? Does it move up the food chain? If I eat fish, am I eating plastic? To find out more, I've come along to the University of Exeter to meet Professor Tamara Galloway, who's going to show us how studies are beginning to reveal just how widespread these microplastics could be in the food chain, and maybe even in you. So let's talk plastics, uh, microplastics. I know that in face creams, especially the exfoliating face washes, there are what's known as micro beads. Mm -hmm. um, is that what we're talking about when we're talking about microplastics? Uh, we, well, we are, and here are some here. So we've purified plastic out of this one tube. These are plastics that have been made to be of a tiny size. Yeah. So 90,000 tiny pieces of plastic for every shower is a, a rough estimate. That um, many? They make up just one tiny portion of the microplastics that we find in the ocean. Every time you walk across the beach, you'll see items like this, so large pieces of plastic debris that have washed up on the shoreline. Yeah. And what happens over time is that the action of wind and tide and sunlight will break that down, it, firstly into what we might call macro pieces of plastic, mm -hmm. um, and then eventually into microplastic. So these are coming brittle, um, we've got uh, fibres in there, we've got broken pieces of bottle and bag um, all mixed in together. And then, I'm guessing, all of these bit of macro and these micro get broken down even further. Even smaller. So what we've got here are some things that we've um, broken down for you to show you what they look like. This is a polyethylene plastic bag mm -hmm. um, and this is what it looks like when it's been broken down into the microplastic size range. So, so these, you've done this here in the lab We've done this here in the lab. But and you we, would find this in the ocean. We find this in the ocean all of the time so we haven't analysed a single water sample anywhere in the world that hasn't contained some tiny pieces of plastic in it. Well hang on a minute. You haven't found any sample across the whole of the world that we study that doesn't have microplastic. Doesn't have in at it. least one tiny piece of plastic in it, and that's when we started to realise that we had a problem. Do we know how much plastic will actually kind of end up in the ocean? Um, well, that's been estimated from modelling studies and from surveys that have been done all around the world. And the current estimate is that as much as eight million tonnes of plastic is entering the oceans every year. That's crazy. That's a garbage truck of plastic. Every minute, somewhere in the world is being dumped into the ocean. A garbage truck of plastic. Yeah. Every minute dumped yeah. into the ocean. That is sickening. So there is a crazy amount of plastic getting into the ocean, yeah. and it gets broken down into this phenomenal amount of microplastics. Mm. And the problem there is that the marine organisms consume it. Well, that's the worry, isn't it? Because the microplastics overlap with the preferred prey item of so many different animals, particularly animals at the base of the marine food web. Things like copepods, worms, and also um, bivalve mussels. So, so the problem is that they don't know what this is. Yeah. So, so when they're just bringing in all that water, filter feeding, the microplastics come in with it. The one experiment that we've got set up in the lab uh, for you at the moment, we've got some bivalve mussels, so these are common blue edible mussels collected from the shorelines around about the southwest of the UK, and we've given them some algae to feed in the water. So you can see that what they're doing over the, the time lapse is they're filtering that algae out of the water down into their bodies. You'd be surprised at how much water a, a mussel can filter. It can filter up to 12 litres an hour and if there are Gosh. tiny particles in the water they will be taken up by the mussels and they could enter into their tissues. Now that's an experiment that you've been running here actually for a very long time. Yes, we've been doing similar experiments and we've, we've used mussels and we've used many other species as well. But we've been studying, well, what happens to that plastic? Is it taken up? If it is taken up, does it get into the animal's tissues? If it gets into the animal's tissues, what, what might it be doing? Mm. Is it doing any harm? Because I suppose that's the question. Do they just filter the microplastic and they go, oh, we don't, I don't want that and just get rid of it? Or do they filter it and then it stays in it there? It stays in their gut and they start to try and digest it. And then they're spending time trying to digest something that's not inherently nutritious. And that could cause effects. And what we've been using are these um, small plastics. These are 10 micron sized polyvinyl chloride 
or PVC granules, and they've been dyed with a fluorescent dye so that we can study where they go inside of the animal. And what are you discovering, what those experiments show? What showing? we're discovering is that the particles are taken in, um, a lot of them are ingested um, with the normal faecal material of the animals, but a, a significant proportion are retained within the animals' bodies. Tamara and her team are at the forefront of this science and have had to develop new ways to study whether plastics are getting into the tissues of filter feeders like mussels. This is how they test them. Oh, and if you're a bit squeamish, best look away. First, they dissect out the tissues and add a strong bleach solution. Second, they mix it up into what's essentially a plastic muscle soup, then pop it in the oven at 60 degrees for 48 hours. Here's a sample the team prepared earlier so I can take a look under the microscope. So that's what we've got here. That's what we've got here. Um, so just to confirm, this is one muscle's this inside. This is one muscle's worth of inside. Digested and... Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, so what am I looking at? So what at? you're looking at, you can see the squares that are the grids of the filter. And what you should be able to see is you can see two lines on that filter paper. So those are fibres. They're plastic fibres? Most probably plastic fibres. What we'll do next in the procedure is go and identify them uh, conclusively using a special microscope. So that shows that in just a randomly selected muscle, you have found fibres. We have found fibres and we've found plastics, fibres or, or pieces in every muscle that we've studied so far. Hang on a minute, every single muscle every that single you've muscle, looked at, yeah. you found fibres in it? We found fibres in it and of course what we would need to know is does that cause any harm? We don't know at this point in time. Does it take any chemicals with it? Does it harm the muscle in any way? How long does it stay in the muscle tissue before it's ex excreted yeah. um, or disposed of? And if that's one muscle, how does that scale up then? Well, you can see that in some of the examples that we've got for you over here. We've got the amount of plastic that you might expect to see in an average muscle in the first uh, container. Mm -hmm. And that's about 4.5 pieces in an average muscle. Right. In the one in the centre, that's how much plastic you might expect to see in your average portion of shellfish. So that's what, 20, 25 muscles? That's about muscles? 20, 25. And uh, the one uh, furthest away, you can see that's the average portion that we might expect to see if you're an avid seafood eater over the course of a year. So that's a year's consumption? That's a year's consumption. That's 11,000 little pieces of plastic. That's a lot, isn't it? So is it just filter feeders we should be concerned about? What about other marine species? One of the team working alongside Tamara is PhD student Adam Porter, an expert in this new microplastic science here at Exeter. He's going to talk me through the evidence of microplastics being found in ocean life further up the food chain. Here we have a sort of representative example of the fish that we, we look at here at the University of Exeter. So anything from plankton through to the bullhuss and the anchovy and the red mullet in between. We should say that this shark uh, is bycatch. Yeah, we don't want to be taking these out of the ocean, um, but when they're caught by accident, then, uh, I mean, the shark is often dead. So we can then take it uh, and, and learn something from it, which is really useful. We can start at the, at the lower end with the zooplankton here. Um, and these are little organisms, very small, they feed in the, in the surface waters. And what they can do is consume little bits of plastic. And we've, we've got a video that shows this uh, little dolly olid and it's beating its little siri. And what that does is creates a current and sucks the plastic into its body. Uh, and we can see that it starts to fill the gut. So if the gut of a little plankton is full, then something like an anchovy may come along and eat that uh, plankton. And suddenly he's got, you know, five, six bits of plastic in his stomach from that one zooplankton. This is how contaminants can be passed through a food web and is known as biomagnification. As we move up a food chain, smaller species are eaten by larger species and the volume of contaminants increases. Zooplankton may ingest just a few tiny pieces of plastic, but a small fish, like an anchovy, will eat hundreds of zooplankton, meaning that one fish could then contain potentially hundreds of those tiny pieces of microplastic. Further up the food chain, with larger species like humpback whales potentially eating over a tonne of fish a day, the volume of plastic they consume becomes even even larger. While some of this plastic will likely be excreted, in theory it means animals at the top of the chain could be the most severely affected. This is a complex food web that scientists are continuing to study in order to understand the effects of plastics globally. But the fact that right at the bottom of the chain it's coming in with the plankton yeah, and absolutely. then that's then getting eaten by the anchovies. So if we ate an anchovy, yeah. 
you know, straight out of one of the tins, yes. we could be consuming the plastic. Yeah, so fish that we eat whole are, are, are something of, you know, that's really of interest to us because these are the kind of things that actually we're not cleaning the gut out, which is where most of the plastics are. So when we're eating something whole, we're eating whatever that fish has eaten. Suddenly there is a potential for us to be ingesting plastic from these little anchovies that we're eating whole. But definitely for fish that we consume whole, like a mussel yeah. or like an anchovy, yeah. um, you know, if the evidence is shown that there is microplastics in there, yeah, we absolutely. will be consuming them. If there's plastic in there, which we, we've shown that there is, then yes, we would be ingesting plastics. Then as you get to the bigger fish um, and you're eating the flesh, can that plastic get from gut into flesh? The jury's still out on that. But if it does get into the tissue, it's going to be a smaller proportion of the total amount it's eaten. Um, but we could be consuming, uh, we could be consuming plastic. We just don't know yet because we haven't found conclusive evidence that it's in the tissue of an, a, a load of species. You know, if we find it in one, then there's, you know, there's a question mark that still hangs over. Is that going to impact us? And we need to look in many species that humans consume a lot of to be able to work that out. Wow, what a day! I mean, plastic is just so prolific in our world. But the fact that we're dumping you know, one garbage truck worth into the ocean every minute and that they haven't been able to find a sample here of water anywhere in the whole of the world that doesn't have microplastics in it and they haven't found a mussel that doesn't have microplastics in it. I came here today to find out how much plastic we eat. Clearly if we eat mussels, we eat plastic. Um, but this is really new research. You know, we don't yet know if that plastic leaches out into the flesh of fish or how many contaminants uh, it kind of takes along with it and then the effect on us when we do consume it. Bottom line is, plastic dumped into the ocean by man is causing huge problems for that whole marine ecosystem. But the research that's being done here could lead us to identify you know, which is the worst culprit and then change our practices. If you've got any questions about this, please do put them down in the comments and we'll try to get some of the, uh, the experts to have a look at them. If you've experienced plastic in the marine environment, let me know in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, BBC Earth Lab, then uh, subscribe, like, and I'll see you very soon.